Hi guys. What we have here is a Hitachi V650F 60 megahertz oscilloscope. And um, it's in a remarkably clean shape for its age. There's not a scratch on the front panel. All of the knobs, all of the switches are in place. The caps are on all of the switches. Uh, the lights all work. It's in extremely good, clean condition. Not a scratch on the uh, uh, on the scope um, window. The cabinet is in remarkable shape. There, there are a couple of light surface Mars. I don't know that the camera can pick them up. They're not even easy to see with the eye. Um, but it's in a remarkably clean condition. No scratches. Whoever had this took good, sh good care of it. Didn't mistreat it. And the scope uh, was designed well too. I mean, it's lasted all these years. Uh, uh, it had to have been maintained and had to have been designed and built well. Um, there is plenty of intensity left in the uh, in the tube. We can turn that trace way up or way down. Bring it up to a uh, sensible level here. Focus works fine. Nice sharp focus. Um, trace rotation uh, is functional. We can change the rotation of the line. So we'll bring it in even here with the uh, horizontal. Um, we are right now in position channel A. Uh, this would be channel 2. Um, this would be both channels. There's channel A on the top, channel B on the bottom. This is in chopped mode. That was an alternate earlier, and then we have the additive mode. Frankly, don't know what the additive mode is all about. I've never used it. But um, we also have an XY position uh, where we can uh, uh, drive the trace from a sweep generator and, uh, and observe transfer function of a filter or whatever it is we're trying to analyze. Um, our time base is variable from 0.5 seconds per division. With 10 divisions that'd be 5 seconds for a complete trace across the screen. And then we have um, 22 steps until we get to 50 nanoseconds per division. All right, one of the uh, obstacles I have to do here is I have to be able to show you that I can uh, I can properly read uh, voltages in my vertical positions. And then once I've done that, and then I prove that my time base is sweeping properly, if I can prove linearity, where I sweep from zero in a straight line to a known magnitude voltage, and then come back down in, within a certain time period, as long as I'm maintaining that straight line, I know that I am interpolating every point in between accurately. Uh, so it's a good representation then at that point that I, ha I have linearity and that I'm able to faithfully reproduce my signals. So what I've got here, I've got a, a DC voltage coming from my uh, power supply here. I am reading at the moment 20 millivolts um, coming through a... Uh, a little divider network and I'm going to display on here at full scale at the lowest uh, most sensitive position I have is five millivolts per division and four divisions vertically would give me 20 millivolts so we are looking at a 20 millivolt signal it's a little bit fuzzy because uh, at this low of a voltage I am getting noise, um, and I am not, uh, I'm not perfectly shielded here I'm, in order for me to read the voltages and so on. I'd, I would need to use shielded cables. But you can see that I am centered at the, uh, the full scale position at 20 millivolts. All right, let's, uh, 
Let's go to 10 millivolts per division. And there we are at two divisions. So two divisions, that's 20 millivolts. Let's go ahead and, uh, and kick this up to full scale. And then I should be able to see that I am now at 40 millivolts, which I am running 39.5. So we are right there. All right, let's go ahead and drop to uh, 20 millivolts per division. We are riding at uh, division two, which at uh, uh, 20 millivolts per division, that would be 40 millivolts, and we are still at the 40 millivolts. So uh, let's go ahead and kick that up full range. All right, and I should now see uh, 20 millivolts per division times 4 is 80 millivolts, and I should be reading 80 millivolts over here, and I'm running 79.3, which that's because I eyeballed it when I adjusted it over here, but hey, that's perfect. Uh, let's drop to, or go up, I should say, to 50 millivolts per division. 50 millivolts per division right now, I'm running run one and one half divisions. Um, so I'm running uh, 50 plus uh, 25, 70. I don't know, I think I'm running 80 millivolts here, but it's, uh, it's difficult to see. Uh, running 79.3, so 80 millivolts would be about right. If I bring her up to the line um, at the first division. Let's see. First division right there. And I am seeing uh, 100.2 millivolts at 50 millivolts per division. That would be right. Let's take her up full scale and let's see what we got here. 197.3. So within 2.7 millivolts of full scale and that's eyeballing it so not bad I could uh, double check my zero and then adjust for full scale once again just lightly I'd say that's about it that brought us up to 198.4 so 200 millivolts it's there Let's go to 0.1, uh, 0.1 volts per division. Two divisions up, so 0.2 volts, and that's uh, 200 millivolts still, so we're there. Let's bring that up to full scale. Full scale at 0.1, that uh, should be 400 millivolts, and I am running right now 398 millivolts, so 400 millivolts, it's there. Okay, let's go to 0.2 volts per division, and we are on division 2 at 400 millivolts, which would be right. Let's bring ourselves up touchy. Check our zero. Zero is there. Check our full scale. Full scale is there and we would be running at 0.2 that's 800 millivolts and we are running right now 796. So we are within four millivolts of full scale. It's uh, accurate. Okay, let's change to um, 5 millivolts per division. And we are one and a half divisions up roughly again. Um, I'm going to take her up to full scale. I would say that looks to me to be full scale. Uh, 0.5 volts per division, four divisions, 200 millivolts. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 0.5 times 8 would be 2 volts. And we are reading 1.982. So within 
a little less than two hundredth of a volt, we're there. Zero. There's uh, two divisions at one volt per division. That's two volts. We'd expect that because we're still at two volts. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring ourselves up to full scale. I would say that's uh, full scale. And we are reading 300 and well, 3.978, so 3.98 volts within two hundredths of a volt of being four volts, which at one volt per division is four volts. So we're right there. Let's go ahead and put her on two volts per division. And we are two divisions up. So that's four volts, which is correct. Let's go ahead and kick ourselves up full scale. Full scale would be right about there. Okay. Check our zero once again here. Zero is right there. And full scale is right there. We are running 7.95. Within five hundredths of a volt, uh, we're displaying 8 volts. 2 volts per division, 4 divisions, 8 volts. And then finally, the 5 volt per division scale. There's our 1.5 divisions roughly again. And let's... Uh, at 5 volts per division, if I go up 2 divisions, that's 10 volts. So let's see if we can do that. Check our zero. That zero is good. And we are on the line right about there. Come on, just a hair. There. That's 10 volts. And we are reading 10.04 volts, so we were able to uh, to uh, discern 10 volts there, no problem. Let's go ahead and try for 15. I guess right about there. Full scale. Uh, we're within th three hundredths of a volt of reading our 15 volts full scale. And maybe we can kick her up a little bit more and go for 20. Let's check our zero once again. Make sure we haven't drifted. Zero's good. Full scale looks uh, pretty good. All right, we are running 19.91. Um, we are within nine hundredths of a volt of being 20 volts at full scale. So within the accuracy of the, uh, the scope and our eyes, we've done uh, a full check of channel one uh, for all of its, uh, its settings. It's able to determine voltage. It's an important first step.